Hey everyone, it's Ikara Nakamura here, and today I'm going to be showing a game that I played against Magnus Carlsen from the third round of the recent Norway chess event. Um, so to give a little bit of background before I start looking at the game, um, prior to this game I had won my first round game against Anish Giri. I had drawn my second round game against Levon Aroni and both with white, and then in this third round game I was playing Magnus with the black pieces. Now predominantly, for whatever reason, I seem to get black against Magnus in a lot of the classical games that we've played, um, especially of late. So it wasn't really that much of a surprise when I saw the pairing, um, but certainly playing Magnus with black is, is obviously quite a challenge. Um, although in our previous encounter prior to this, I did beat him for the first time with the black pieces in the Bilbao event from July of 2016. So without further ado, let's take a look at the game. So the game started E4, C5. And now in the game, Magnus played the very traditional knight F3. But, but it's worth noting that the game that we played in Bilbao the previous year, Magnus started with knight E2. The game went D6, knight BC3, A6, G3, G6. Bishop g2, bishop g7, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6. Now, the only reason I mention this is that it is possible in this position for white to play h3. And if white plays h3, we have, in fact, transposed the game that we played in Norway. So that's the only reason, I'm, that's the reason that I mentioned that Magnus played this knight e2 move order in a previous game. So in this game, Magnus played knight f3. I played d6, d4. C takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, a6, and here Magnus played h3. And so in this position, um, normally black, black has many choices. You can play e5. e6 lately has become very popular. Grishchuk and Vashi Lagrave have played it quite a bit. Um, but for this game, I chose to play the rather unorthodox g6 here. And so this essentially is turned into some kind of mix of a dragon and a knight orf, and it's close to the drag dwarf, but... With white having played h3, it's a little bit different than some of the normal lines. Normally, white will play bishop e3, g6, f3. And after bishop g7, queen d2, if black plays b5, white can play a4, b4, knight a2. And this is this is very similar, if not in fact the exact game that I played against Vladimir Kramnik in the Norway Chess, chess Blitz tournament at the start. And in that game, I got a very bad position. Um, and I was very lucky not to lose the game. So... Against bishop e3, it's a lot less effective. But having played h3 after g6, Magnus really surprised me when he played the move g3. Uh, normally, white would play something like bishop e3 here or possibly just g4 and bishop g2. But Magnus does tend to prefer a lot of slow positions. So he played g3. Here I played knight to c6. He played bishop e3. Bishop g7. Now, just, just to point out, I, I realized that in the game here, I did play a slightly different order. But after bishop g7, bishop g2, uh, it would turn back into that position from uh, from what I showed with the move order, starting with 2 knight e2. So knight c6, bishop e3, bishop g7, bishop g2, castles, castles. And here I played knight to d7. Now, there, there were some other top games with this position from the past. Um, probably the most prominent one was this game against Motilev against Grishchuk, where Grishchuk played bishop to d7, and then after knight d5, rook to c8, knight takes c6, b takes c6. Uh, the game ended in a quick draw here after the repetition with bishop b6, queen e8, knight c7, queen d8, knight d5, queen e8, knight c7, and they just repeated two more times, and... Uh, the game was drawn in the Russian team championships in Sochi of 2017. So bishop d7 is a completely reasonable move as well, but I like knight d7. I thought the idea was very simple and straightforward here. Um, and, and as Magnus pointed out after the game, he did not quite understand what, what my concept was. Um, so he played b3 pretty quickly, and now I played the move knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, bishop d4, queen d4, and now the move b6. And in fact, my idea here is very straightforward in that I want to play bishop b7, rook c8, finish the development very quickly, and basically ask what what, what is white doing? Because white has this bishop on g2, which is completely fine. It's it's uh, it's nicely fianchetto, but it's not able to create a lot of threats in this position. And at the same time, if white plays for f4, f5, it's not really so clear what, what the follow-up will be with my bishop on b7, opposing white's bishop on g2. So here Magnus played knight to d5. Um, another move that is possible but very hard to play without without some preparation ahead of the ahead of time is the move e5. And after e5, d takes e5, white plays queen to d2. 
rook to a7, rook a d1, and here black can play e6. And position here is very interesting. It's not 100% clear what's going on. Probably white should play something like queen d6, queen c7, and maybe knight to e4 here, or possibly exchanging on c7 and then playing knight to e4. And in fact, white is completely okay here. However, without preparation ahead of time, it's very hard to play this as it looks like white is simply gambiting a pawn with e5. And the idea is not, the ideas are not very concrete or clear. So here Magnus played knight to d5. I played bishop to b7. He played c4. Here I played the move e5, which is an interesting move. I could have also played b5. And after rook a c1, e5, it again will transpose back into the game. But I played e5 after a thing because I was trying to figure out what the ideas are here. So one idea is possibly taking on d5. For example, I can take on d5, and if white plays c takes d5, I can play a5 followed by knight c5, creating a nice outpost. And unless white can play a3, b4, the position should be completely fine. However, what I was worried about with taking on d5 is that white would take with the e-pawn, and this prevents me from ever pushing my e-pawn, because, for example, say e5 after d takes e6, f takes e6, uh, white can just take an exchange here on a8. So I can never really play e5, because then I'll open up this long diagonal. And so the problem with this position for black here is that white has a very simple play. So white will just play f4, rook e1, rook e2, and rook f e1, and put pressure on this e7 pawn. And it's very hard to play, because if I ever try something like knight c5, white can play b4, kicking the knight. And even if I get something like a5, rook e1, knight c5, let's say rook e2, queen c7, rook f e1, rook a8, after a move like f4, it's, it's probably okay for black here, but the position is very cramped. You don't have a lot of space here, and white controls the tempo of the game. So I really wanted to avoid something like this, which is why in the game I played e5. Magnus played queen e3. I played b5. It's worth noting here if I play bishop takes d5, white will not play e takes e5 because here my pawn is already on e5. So after f5, I'm completely fine since this diagonal will remain closed here. However, white can play c takes d5, and after a5, a3, white is threatening to play b4 and then just put a rook on c6 here. And so it's, it's very hard to play this position, and I think white is probably just a little bit better here. So that's why in the game I played the move b5. Magnus played rook a c1. Uh, the point being that if white plays c takes b5 here, then I'll take on d5, e takes d5, a takes b5. And again, I've gotten the structure I want where I've gotten my pawn to e5 and white ends up having capture on d5 with the e pawn. So I can always go for f5, f4. And also with this two on one structure here on the queen side, with my pawn on b5 and white having these pawns on a2 and b3, a2 is always a weakness. And I can also just put a knight on c5 at some point if I need to, followed by b4, for example. So... That's why Magnus played rook a c1, I played b takes c4, and he played rook takes c4, which is a good move. If he had played b takes c4 here, for example, I don't have to do it right away, but I could just take on d5, and obviously at e d5, I can just play knight c5, followed by f5, and I have this great outpost as white no longer has a push to b4 with his pawn since he captured on c4. And if white takes, I do the same thing. I can just play knight c5. And again, white is captured with the b pawn on c4 to d5. And white no longer has a b pawn to play b4 and kick this great knight out, out from the square c5. So in the game, Magnus played rook takes c4. I played bishop takes d5, e takes d5. Now I played a5, trying to put my knight on c5 again and prevent preventing a b4 since I can just take it with my pawn on a5. So rook fc1. Knight c5, a3, and here I played a bad move. Here I played the move f5. It's a little bit too aggressive. I simply underestimated the strength of this, this line with b4 followed by rook c6. Um, a better try would have been to play a4 here, and after b4, if white takes on a4, I can probably just play f5, for example, or just take the pawn on a4 or knight, with knight takes a4. Um, but after b4, I play knight b3. Rook to c3, and now I put the knight on this great square on d4 where it can no longer be be removed without sacrificing some material. But I was a little bit worried during the game about something like f4, trying to undermine this pawn here on e5. Like, for example, if rook e8, f5, e d5, e and maybe something like d6 here, for example, opening up the long diagonal, maybe threatening rook c7 or bishop to c6 as well. And I was just a little bit worried about this sort of a pawn structure. 
Here, the computer recommends a move like knight to b5, rook to c1, and very simply rook e8 here. With the point that if white takes on e5, you can always just capture back with the rook instead of the pawn. And after something like rook c6, just moving the knight back to d4. And if something like rook c7, again, just knight b5, and black is doing completely fine here. But during the game, I was very unsure of this, and I, I felt like f5 was a way of trying to create create some counterplay on the king's side, and also maybe I could get some f4, f3, create some kind of an attack. But in, in, in general, it's probably a little bit too slow. So here Magnus played b4, a takes b4, a takes b4, knight d7. Magnus played rook c6, and here I played f4. And now Magnus took, I took, he played queen e6, and now I played rook f7. And in fact, during the game, I, for whatever reason, I just I just overlooked the fact that after queen d6, um, a move like f3, white can simply retreat to f1, and after queen g5, white can just simply block with queen g3. So I overestimated the position, and um, and and so therefore uh, it, it, it's tricky because after queen e6, rook f7, queen takes d6, I ended up having to play the move queen to g5. Magnus here played king h1, which is probably slightly wrong. White probably should play rook to c8 check first. And after takes, takes, king g7, king h1. And here, queen h4 is the best move. I can also play it in the other order with f3, bishop f1, queen h4, and it should transpose after rook c2. But queen h4 forces white to play rook c2. f3, bishop to f1. And now queen to d4 trying to basically put the queen in the center and create threats. Here I'm trying to basically keep my, my queen on all, all of these pawns, as well as threatening queen d1 to attack the rook on c2 and the bishop on f1. So here white has to play king to g1, and now knight to f6. And here white probably should just play b5. But after queen takes d5, queen takes d5, knight takes d5, rook c5, rook d7, king h2, and knight b6, Black should be holding, although it still is unpleasant because of the fact that white has this pass pawn on b5. And white also can bring the king in to attack this weak pawn on f3. And with correct play, it should be a draw, but it's a little bit tricky here to play. And so here white should be better, even though even though it's correct play, it's a draw. Just because this pawn on f3 is weak, white can bring his king over. Um, this pass pawn on b5 can never be attacked, and white can maybe play for rook c6 and b6 at the right moment. Just in general, white's, white's a little bit better and black's struggling. But in the game, Magnus played king to h1. I played the move f3. Magnus played the move bishop to f1. And now I played the move knight to f6, basically trying to create some threats. I'm attacking the pawn on d5. I'm also threatening knight e4, attacking the queen on d6, and the pawn on f2. And here Magnus blundered. He played the move queen to e6. Now I suspect that during the game, uh, Magnus probably saw that this move queen g3 was possible, but probably he assumed that after queen g3, fg3, knight e4, that he was just losing the pawn on g3 and he would be in some trouble. However, after the move king to h2, if rook a2, white can just simply play the move rook back to c2. And white is simply up a pawn here, and there really are no threats because white's king is safe. Um, the knight on e4 is not really creating any threats, and white's bishop on f1 is perfectly placed to assist these pawns for coming down the board while preventing this f pawn from ever going to f1. So probably queen g3 was the was the best try, but um, I, I suspect Magnus just saw some ghosts with knight e4. It's also worth noting that, that after queen g3, queen takes d5 is not possible because white can play rook takes f6, and after rook takes f6, Bishop c4 pin, pinning the queen and the king, and uh, white's just going to be up a queen for a rook. But in the game, Magnus played the move queen to e6, and now after king to g7, it becomes very unclear, because here I'm threatening to play rook to e8, attacking the queen, and then it would have to go to queen d6, which would allow knight e4 with that same, same double attack on the queen on d6 and the pawn on f2. So here Magnus played rook c7, and now we exchanged rooks, and I played king to h6. And now after a deep think, Magnus played the move queen to e1, which probably is the only move, in fact, because if white plays a normal-looking move like, say, say rook c6 or, say, d6, for example, I can just play rook to a1, attacking the bishop, and if white, say, protects the bishop with a move like queen c4, I have queen g2 checkmate, since white can't take the queen on g2. 
So Magnus played queen to e1 to cover the back rank here. And now I played the move rook to a2. Now, during the game, I, I really wanted to play this move knight to e4. It looked extremely appealing because, again, if queen takes e4, I just play uh, rook, rook to a1. And and white might be able to hold with queen e3, but it's uh, it's tricky. And, and also here, rook to e8 is another move that I, that I really liked as well. But after rook to e8... White can simply play queen to c1, forcing an exchange of the queens. And in this case, it should be a pretty routine draw, but I still want to try and create some threats. So that's why I played the move rook to a2. And now Magnus played rook to e7. It's worth noting, again, I'm creating a lot of little tricks here. Like here, I'm threatening to play the move rook to e2. So if let's say white plays d6, I can play a move like rook to e2. And white can't take the rooks again at queen g2 is checkmate. And white has to play queen c1, but now I can play rook takes f2. And again, while this might be a draw, white is definitely in trouble here because now this pawn on f3 is very strong, and I'll just bring the rook back to d2 to attack this pawn on d6. And basically here, white ends up with three pawn islands, so any endgame, white is going to have some difficulties, although it still should be a draw. So here Magnus played rook e7 to cover the e2 square. And now here I played the move knight to g4, basically forcing a draw. I, I really wanted to play the move knight takes d5, but here after rook to e5, if I go queen, queen d2, white can play bishop c4, and while it should be a drawn rook and pawn ending, it becomes very difficult. Takes, takes, rook d2, white exchanges on d5 and plays the move rook to b1, trying to push the pawn straight down the board, and I have to play rook b5. And after king h2, king g5, king g3, this should be a draw with king f5, king takes f3, king e6, and I bring in the king all the way over to stop this b pawn. But it's definitely not what I was looking for, and I definitely would, would have struggled had this occurred. Another possibility here, which I considered, was the move queen takes d5. But after b5, queen d4, well, I can simply play the move queen to e3. And after queen e3, rook e3. If I play rook a1, white just goes king g1, protecting the bishop, and captures the pawn on f3 next move. And after rook takes f2, king g1, I'll have to move the rook to b2, and after rook takes f3, this should be a draw. Black is still slightly better after knight e4, but with correct play, this, this would be a pretty routine draw. And so that's why in the game I ended up playing the move knight to g4. And white basically has to take the knight. If you don't take the knight, I'll just take on f2 with check, and it'll lead to mate in a couple moves. So after hg4, here I force a draw with queen h4, king g1, queen takes g4, and we repeat it back and forth with king h1, queen h4, king g1, queen g4. Um, and we made a draw. White, white can't try to play on. For example, if white plays king h2, queen h4, if bishop h3, I have rook takes f2, and if king g1, then I just play queen g3, king h1, and rook h2, checkmate. So that's why Magnus repeated moves here. And so the game ended in a peaceful draw, which was which was quite good for me. Um, during the game, I would say I was quite optimistic. I, I liked my attack. I didn't realize quite how, how bad or how dangerous it was. Um, but nevertheless, I, I felt that in the critical moments, I, I found good moves, and I tried to play aggressive attacking chess, and... And Magnus had, had perhaps one or two opportunities to improve on his play, but it was never really that dangerous overall. So I felt that I played a good game. I was able to draw this game with black in the third round, and this meant that in the fourth round I played white against Maxim vashi Lagrave, and I will be covering that game in another episode. So once again, thanks everyone for watching this video, and I'll be back soon.